And I went, oh my gosh, I love those boots. Those are amazing. And she stopped and went, oh, <laughs> yup. And just kept talking. This week I am joined by Katrina Davis. Um, what, uh, <laughs> what clip did you bring to us this week, Katrina? Um, so I brought a clip of Patton Oswalt. It is a story about him and his uh, late wife, uh, Michelle McNamara, going on a house showing with a realtor and unknowingly interrupting an orgy. We've been looking for houses. We've been house hunting for two months now. And a month ago, at 10 a.m. on a Sunday, our realtor, me, and my wife interrupted an orgy. And he does something that I didn't realize uh, that I do also, where I once got off stage and someone said, you tell jokes backwards. Oh. And I was like, what do you mean? And they were like, you say the thing that would maybe be the punch, like not the punchline, but you say like a sentence up top that's like, technically getting way ahead of yourself and then you back, go backward and like reverse it. So I realized, no joke, real time, just realized that I might do that because he does that. Right, yeah. No, it's it's a really, really good storytelling technique is to give the person this like shocking thing up front and then they're already sucked in. They, they have to like listen to whatever you're gonna say to explain this because it's like wait why do you just come to us with that yeah and i think that it's something i don't do this but it's something that i realize he does where he gives like the date and time he starts the jokes like he's it's a diary <laughs> he starts with all of this like Scene, day, morning. You know, for good storytelling, without the comedy, you want to give details, you want to, like, paint a picture yeah. for people. Um, but for comedy, you know, and this may be, he's at a point in his career where he probably doesn't have to do it, though he still does because his, you know, training was through co comedy clubs and, you know, sh maybe shitty bar shows where people's attention span is so short. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So if you don't say something funny or interesting every, you know, 10, 20 seconds. Yeah, you don't have time. Yeah, and, you know, people will just uh, tune you out. We interrupted an orgy. We were told, go to this house at 10 a.m. We'll take a tour. We knock on the door. We wait. No one answers. We're just about to leave. We were just about to walk away. Door opens. There's this guy. Oh, oh, wow. Um. That's right, you guys were going to look at the house. We, uh, a bunch of my friends came by. When he said the word bye, this wave of fuck fumes came rolling out of the house. Fuck fumes have stayed with me my entire life since I heard this joke. And he knew he's going to do another one later that is also, like, in terms of... Um, I'm a copywriter during the day, a copywriter during the day. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate just like the dumb alliterations that he <laughs> has a lot of <laughs> Hit us. He, he, he sees that we have smelled it. We see that he sees that we've smelled it. And instead of everybody just going goodbye, now the social contract kicks in. And we've got a cover because we're civilized human beings. Him just stripping down, like when he's like, instead of everyone just saying goodbye, like that should have been it. <laughs> I shouldn't even have this story, but everybody has to pretend that this didn't just happen. So I love how genuinely angry he sounds when he's like, we should have just said goodbye with this like rage inside of it. I think it is like a frustration with society in general. Like, why are we all putting ourselves through this? Why, why are we all walking into orgy? Let's all stop doing it. It wastes everybody's time. And it's like, they're obviously not going to buy that house, no matter how wonderful it is because of the situation they walked into. All right, like, this is all a sham. I feel like a lot of good comedy is really just um, shitting on societal norms. And, you know, this is really no different. Yeah. So he says, would you like to take a tour of the house? 
in parentheses because you did not just catch me fucking dozens of people. And we have to respond, of course we'd like to tour the house, parentheses, because in no way have we caught you fucking dozens of people. So in we go into this enchanted forest of cock shafts and labias. It was, yes, exactly. We walk inside, there are air mattresses all over the floor. People are scattering everywhere. I love that he takes the mic stand and puts it behind him. Like he has a lot of room on the stage. He didn't really need to do that. But it, it's kind of like, all right, here we go. I'm gonna like explain this to you. At one point, this busty Russian girl comes out, putting a robe on. Oh my goodness, the, um, the cleaning lady did not come by. Oh, you're not even fucking trying. Really? <laughs> That was the first thing you thought of. Yeah, the cleaning lady didn't come by at 10 a.m. on a Sunday. You should fire that bitch. That's really unprofessional. <laughs> Everyone knows Saturday night's fuck night. Bring three buckets. <laughs> so we're just trying to get this over with, and then a guy, well, a blonde 17-year-old kid comes out of the bathroom, and he's got Craigslist hookup written all over him. <laughs> This was a, we need a 14th. So he comes out of the bathroom and he got dressed in, he put on whatever was in the bathroom to wear. And here's what was in the bathroom. Again, you know, he's like, he grabbed whatever's in the bathroom, pause, and here's what was in the bathroom. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm about to, he's giving you these clues, like, all right. It's not going to be normal, whatever it is. <laughs> all right. <laughs> It's it's kind of good because when, whenever he gets to a part in his story that's going to be a little lengthy, he lets you know up top, like, all right, I'm, here we go, <laughs> get ready. <laughs> um, and it doesn't get old. This is like the third time in this one story that he's done it, but it, it I don't know, it just, it's it makes it funnier even. If anything, when you're doing something longer, it kind of, reignite your attention like if you were kind of drowned oh yeah <laughs> like even the inflection in his voice you know that it's time for you to start paying attention again a pair of girls sweatpants that he has put on backwards so the word juicy is across <laughs> his groin juicy juicy which I hate to say probably factually accurate in terms of storytelling there are i'm sure there are things that are like made up or like uh embellished or whatever or there are things that like are crazier that you have to leave that out because there's just no place for it or it doesn't fit or it would distract people too much you know what i mean like yeah. there are real decisions you make that aren't that Technically, your life might have been even crazier, but you're just trying to focus on this one part of the crazy. <laughs> but also, have taken things from other real instances and put them in stories. Because, like, I kind of thought not so much that that guy wasn't real, but that that might have been like a homeless guy he saw one day. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> story, he was like, "Oh, that's where Juicy Guy's gonna go." Because I do stuff like that all the time, so. It's uh, so much that it's not he might not have been there but at some point that <laughs> yeah. was then he's also wearing a girl's tank top from the gap aqua blue or whatever it was and he comes out and with no one asking him a question or even looking at him he announces well everyone i'm leaving goodbye so that ensures everyone turns and looks as he opens the sliding glass back door and just walks away from the house. We're in the fucking Hollywood Hills. There's nothing back there. There's no other roads. He's just walking into the trees and bushes, barefoot. There, where the fuck is he going? There he goes, sweetie. There goes fuck squatch through the underbrush. Look at that. A rare sighting of that cryptozoological marvel. Honey, get your camera. Take a blurry picture of Fuck Squatch. Oh, Fuck Squatch. What secrets do you hide? 
<laughs> we're driving away from the house, and that's when my wife says, I think everyone in that house was fucking each other. <laughs> like you're just now realizing that. We were standing in a fog bank of twat mist for 10 minutes. When he says fog bank of twat mist, it's like the most just i feel like it's almost you can taste the words it's, it's almost like poetic but for all the like wrong reasons we are going home to burn our clothing and it just now hit you All the commercials have gotten so dramatic. Oh my god, because also I can't figure out how to get rid of them, but I keep getting these aggressive weight loss ads. <laughs> so a tomato, and then it's like, you're not eating what you think you're eating. How <laughs> it switches from like a beautiful tomato to this woman, like, <laughs> flat. and I'm like, I don't even understand the connection between these things, but this guy is yelling at me, and I want no part of it.